Welcome to the first service at Morgan Mill Baptist Church. We're continuing our series of Where in the Bible, and today, Where in the Bible is Mount Lebanon? Our passage, beginning passage in Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, in verse 14. Does the snow of Lebanon forsake the rock of the open country, or is the cold flowing water from a foreign land ever snatched away? Now this Mount Lebanon, not the Mount Lebanon in Pennsylvania, this Mount Lebanon is just east of the Mediterranean Sea. It is 150 miles or 240 kilometers north, northeast from Jerusalem. By air today, it's only about 30 minutes. You probably can fly it faster than you can collect your luggage. It is definitely known for snow. How much snow? Well, today Lebanon still has a ski resort. It's in the Mount Lebanon Governorate. It is the largest ski resort in the Middle East. How large, you might ask? They have 42 slopes and 50 miles of groomed track. It opened this morning at 8 a.m. in case local time, in case you're interested in going skiing. Mount Lebanon means White Mountain. Because of the snow at that altitude, the Lebanon Range, which refers to the Lebanon Range, but also specifically Mount Lebanon, the upper range is from 8,000 feet to 10,000 feet. So it's quite a height compared to many of us who live on much lower uh, ground. But it is not snow that is on the flag of Lebanon. It is the cedar trees. Do you remember in geography class that every time we studied an area, a region, or a country, this land's chief exports are... This land is known for, well, Lebanon is known for many things. The cedars of Lebanon is one, but also the snow. Even today, as we've already said, it has the largest ski resort in the Middle East. But also, because of the high elevations and the snow slowly melting into the year, they have a lot of hydroelectric power and lots of water for irrigation. Mount Lebanon, both the range and the individual peak, is definitely known historically, biblically, and even today, for cedar trees and snow. It's interesting in God's Word how God uses illustrations both of the cedars and of snow itself in Scripture. Of the cedars, in the 104th Psalm, verse 16, the trees of the Lord drink their fill, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted. God planted the cedar trees of Lebanon. Of course, he made all the mountains and everything else. Verse 17, where the birds build their nests and the stork whose home is in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats and the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. God not only owns the cattle on a thousand hills, he made those hills. He made the mountains and all the animals that dwell therein also. But God, there in verse 16, planted the cedars of Lebanon. These cedars are so magnificent that they're described as the glory of Lebanon in Isaiah chapters 35 and chapter 60. David's palace was built of these cedars, 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 1. Not only would these cedar trees be strong, they were also beautiful. And the smell of anything built out of them would be wonderful. There are some cabins in the Rocky Mountains that are made of cedar. And uh, it is such a wonderful thing to go into those cabins and see what marvelous scenery and just to smell that wonderful cedar every time you're inside those cabins and lodges. There's another bonus from cedar. Remember all the sheep that are raised in Israel? Sheep, uh, from sheep, you would indeed make your clothes of wool, and cedar is a natural insect repellent. 
Our grandparents had cedar chests, and those who can afford it line their closets with cedar, even today, to protect wool and other things that uh, the moths might get to. Solomon used the cedars of Lebanon in constructing the temple in Jerusalem. David wanted to do that, prepared everything, but God said, no, you have served me, but you are a man of war. I want my temple built by a man of peace, and that would be Solomon. Now, how is that for a major export? Everyone who remembers all of our geography classes over the years. Now, we have more to learn about God using snow as an illustration in part two of our Bible study, and that is next. How does God use snow in Scripture as an illustration?